How are you? I'm very fine, and yourself? I'm doing well. I think you will not, you will not remember, but um, I actually, we spoke 13 years ago. Oh, Jesus Christ. For uh, your first film. Um, yes. In Los Angeles or Toronto, one of those places. So um, uh, you landed on your feet. You were, um, you, it's, a, it's a bad joke. Um, I, was, I was trying to say I'm glad that you've had a, a, been able to make many other films. Thank you very much. Um, before we get into your uh, new film, I just want to go backwards for a second and say how much I enjoyed the voices. Thank you very much. It makes me very happy. Yeah, I, I thought it was so well done. And you cast Ryan Reynolds before his popularity with uh, Deadpool. Yes. Right. Yes. Because Ryan Reynolds has a capacity of comedy that you sense when you see him. I mean, you know, he was very much, you know, the actor of the romantic comedy, but when you meet him, I mean, it's just sufficient to meet him once, and you understand that, you know, he has a lot, lot, lot in his backpack, but you have to see it. And uh, he was, like, probably one of the most delightful people, you know, that I ever worked with. You know, people, they always ask me, like, how, was Ryan, how is Ryan Reynolds in real life? Is he just as fun and as nice, etc.? So whatever you see, actually, on camera, in reality, the guy is 100 times better. So, yeah, he's the perfect gentleman. He's very funny. He's very talented. So, yeah, it was a great experience to, to work with him. I loved it. Yeah, I think the people who are watching this, if they have not seen your film, The Voices, uh, completely different than this, obviously. Yeah, completely. Yeah, but um, totally worth watching. Thank you very much. Jumping into why I get to talk to you today, um, talk a little bit about what it was about this film that says, I have to make this. Well, you know, you, uh, your agent, my, my agent talked to me about the script about Madame Curie. And, you know, I'm a little bit suspicious because I'm like, why remake a film about Madame Curie when from the 1940s it has been so many film and series and documentary and everything done about her and everybody knows her. Then I received this incredible script written by Jack Thorne, and I started reading the script. And incredible enough, the name of the script is radioactive, and it's not called Marie Curie, The Fantastic Destiny, for example. So I started reading it, and I realized not only is it an extremely well-written script, but it, is, it goes much beyond a biopic about, about Madame Curie, because basically you talk about whatever happened after her death like the usage that we have done from her discoveries. And uh, so it becomes a very challenging script because you know you have to make flash forward and you have to make it in a way that all of that looks smooth and it has to come at in the right moment and how to mix all of that together because the film has a side that is biopic and that is a side that is really, you know, it's uh, almost surrealistic. So, you know, to combine these two, it becomes very challenging. But then in the film, you have all the elements of whatever I love. You have the romance, you have, you know, like uh, the questioning of the human being, you have science, you have the epic side of the, of the story. So all of that made it a very attractive uh, film for me. So I had to do it. It was me and nobody else could do it. Uh, was this one of these projects that was very difficult to get off the ground? Or was it one of these things that once you got involved, the pieces moved pretty quick. But basically, my producer said that, you know, the script was ready almost seven years before I was on it. Because, you know, it was a moment that nobody had any interest in that. I think, like, the female movements and Me Too changed a little bit, I think. People suddenly re realized that half of the population of the world are women. So, you know, maybe it is normal that half of the story would be about women. And these women, they don't need always to be attached to someone, you know, like be someone's wife and someone's mother and someone's grandma and someone's lover, you know, they can be actually a full person for themselves. Uh, so, but I think any time I have made a film in my life, it has been like that. I have to pretend that the film is going to happen. If I don't do, like if the film is going to happen, it will never happen. So you work basically for more than one year without knowing if you have the green light or not. You hope that you will have it. And uh, it's just by making this effort that the film is going to happen at the end. And uh, in my mind, it's always like, OK, if they don't green light it, let's say they don't green light it, have I really lost my time? No, because I have made so all these researches. I've learned so much. So you can never say that you have lost your time if you have learned something. You have always gained this time learning something. So it's always good. 
um, her life is, and her her whole family, everything is so incredible what they were able to accomplish. Yes. Um, I would imagine that even with a great script, there are, you know, and you're a writer as well, uh, that you there's, I'm sure, things you wanted to put in that you couldn't, or talk a little bit about being almost overwhelmed by how much she did and trying to do it in the two hours. Oh, then you're, you're completely right. I mean, you know, I mean, that's, for example, her relationship with Einstein, you know, with all the big scientists. You know, at the end, I have just to put one picture because if I have to tell this story too, then, you know, then it's just a whole film just by itself. You know, like each thing of her life can be a whole two hours film by itself. But then you have to have a narration and you have to concentrate and say, okay, so I have to I have the point of view and I have to follow this point of view. So I have to tell this story and not another story because you can make 15 story, let's say, with her story. But this is this story that have to, I have to say. So you have to, you have to choose. And it's always, ex sometimes it's painful because there are things that deserve to be said that you like to say. So you concentrate it in the other scene and then, yeah, you, you, yeah, it's just lots of concentration and saying, this is what I want to say, so this is what I will say. Sure. Um, I'm always curious with, like, scheduling when you're making a movie. You never know what's going to be the first day of photography. As a director, are you picking out, when you're making a movie, um, what, like, maybe what you want to do on the first day to get people maybe easing into it? Or is it sort of like, this is the way the schedule is, let's just go do it? But I would love to impose my own schedule saying, okay, let's start with that. But honestly, that never happens <laughs> because it, it's so much dependent on the economy of the film and what set is available and the other thing is not available. It's so complicated, you know, for the first assistant to make actually a proper thing when, you know, it's a difficult work. So I cannot add on that. So I try to do the best I can, but it's always the same, you know, like, I always feel like the two first days of the shooting, if I could shoot them again as the two last days, because, you know, they're never the best takes. And the, basically what I shot the first day was cut out of the movie. So, you know, this is what happens at the end. But you never have this possibility, this ease to say, okay, let's make the first day the last day again. I, I, com I completely understand. Yeah. Uh, I'm always curious about the editing process because that's the final rewrite. Yes, absolutely. So I'm curious, what was your reaction when you got in the editing room with your footage and what maybe made you very happy and what made you nervous? Well, the thing is that, you know, I work with a great editor who happens to be my best friend, who became my best friend because and who, we, I work with him all my film. I have the same editor because the editing, as you say, is another rewriting of the story. So you better have someone who understands you, who understands your narration, who knows what you really dislike uh, because, you know, what you like can change. But these are things that you hate. So it's better that he's aware, uh, aware of what you really hate, not to make them. And, uh, you know, it's always the same procedure. You start with something, you're like, oh my God, I'm a genius, great, what I have done is great. And then a month and a half later, you're like, I'm a piece of shit. Oh my God, <laughs> it's worth nothing. What I did is all shit, you know, it's gonna be a disaster. Mm -hmm. And then you go back, you know, from the shit that, okay, let's make a good film that actually holds together, let's not be the shit, let's not be the genius. Like somewhere in between is okay. Try to have a story that holds from the beginning to the end. But you know, my, my thing is always a question of rhythm. And my obsession is by the end of the film. Because you can make the best film in the world if the 10 or 15 last minutes is bad. Everybody goes with this idea that you have made a very bad film. No matter what film it is. You have to be able to finish your film in the right way. Because if in the middle, you know, it's, you know, a little bit like that, that's okay. People, they forgive it. But, you know, but you have to start it well. And most important, you have to finish well your, your film. In the middle, you can be a little bit smoother with yourself. But right. yeah. I think that's why a lot of movies nowadays are doing things after the credits to leave you feeling good. Yeah, you know? exactly. But, but this is cheating. <laughs> <laughs> this is cheating. I don't like to cheat. <laughs> um, I'm about to run out of time with you, but I just have to ask as a fan of your work, um, are you working on anything right now that people can look forward to after Radioactive? 
Well, listen, in reality is that, you know, I'm not a very uh, social person. So, you know, I like people a lot, especially when I don't see them very often. So, you know, like after I have made a film, I really need to be a moment with myself. So now I'm making uh, my paintings to prepare my second a painting exhibition. This is very good for me, but also I need a time to, you know, swallow new information, to have new impression, to have new feelings. Because you know, once once I make a film, I put everything in this film. You know, after the film, you know, you just bang on me, and you it's an emptiness. It's nothing in me. I have to refill myself with many things, and then I would like to say something new. And then th this is the moment to choose what I want to do. You know, now is really two projects that I'm thinking about, but I'm just thinking about them. After this promotion is going to finish, I will be a full-time painter for a couple of months, make my, my exhibition, and then if I'm alive still, we will see. Thank you so much for your time. Thank Congratulations you. Congratulations on the movie.